Out of all the MacBooks that Apple has released, this is the one that has interested me the most, and that is the new base model M3 MacBook Pro, because Apple finally got rid of the old Touch Bar 13-inch MacBook Pro and replaced it with this model, but at a $1,599 starting price. Technically, a $300 price increase for the starting price over that Touch Bar model, but also, conversely, you can not only look at this as a replacement for that M2 Pro MacBook Pro, but also just as a cheaper entry-level 14 inch MacBook Pro because that is essentially what this is. But the only catch being is that instead of starting with a pro level chip, well, it now just starts with a regular M3 chip. And that led me to some questions. Number one, is that $300 price increase over the older M2 MacBook Pro worth it? And secondly, is this new M3 MacBook Pro powerful enough to be considered a true pro laptop or should you avoid it? and just get a $2,000 M3 Pro MacBook Pro instead for a true pro level machine. Well, let's find that out. And first let's get the easy stuff out of the way. And that is that the base level model 14 inch MacBook Pro has a lot of the same hardware benefits as the $2,000 model. Both of them have the same excellent ProMotion 120 Hertz mini LED display that can get up to 1600 nits of peak brightness when watching HDR video. And both MacBook Pros can now get up to 600 nits of maximum brightness for everything else. And both the base model M3 and M3 Pro variant also have the same great sounding speakers, the same camera, the same microphone system. So even if you're going for that cheaper base model, you're not missing out on much. Now, that doesn't mean you aren't missing out on anything. The base model MacBook Pro is easy to identify because it is missing one Thunderbolt port on the right-hand side of the device. And internally, this MacBook Pro has one fan in it instead of the two found on the M3 Pro variant. The M3 model also weighs 0.1 pounds less than the M3 Pro version, if that's gonna make you pick one over the other. I don't know who would choose that. Uh, and then the uh, final change in the M3 Pro version is that it gets an exclusive space black color, while the base model M3 version still just comes with an old space gray color. So if you want that exclusive color, you gotta spend more money and upgrade to the Pro model. But yeah, that's it. Those are all the differences from the physical hardware standpoint. And at first glance, it seems like the new base model level is a steal, but the real difference was never about the outward design or the display. It was always all about the chips. Now for the base model, it is outfitted with an M3 chip with an eight core CPU, a 10 core GPU. It comes with 512 gigabytes of internal SSD storage and eight gigabytes of unified memory for $1,599. While the M3 Pro comes with an 11 core CPU and a 14 core GPU with 18 gigabytes of unified memory and 512 gigabytes of storage for $1,999. Now, the first question I had was, is that storage created equal? And what I mean by that is, how fast is the SSD speeds on the base model compared to the M3 Pro variant? So I loaded up the Blackmagic disk speed test, and yeah, here's our first indication of where Apple is saving money on the base model, because it does ship with slower SSD speeds, getting around 3,000 read and write, while the M3 Pro variant gets around 4,300 write and around 5,200 read. While the SSD speeds are faster on the M3 Pro variant, the M3 version, I think, is still plenty fast, and I doubt most people would notice the difference in real-world usage. All right, what about CPU performance? Well, we all know the M3 chip is gonna be weaker than the M3 Pro, but how much weaker, right? Well, if we take a look at Geekbench, we can see in single-core performance, both MacBook Pros are actually the same. But when we go over to multi-core performance, we can see that the M3 Pro is about 17% faster in multi-core performance over the M3 chip. Now, 17% weaker performance for that base level M3 chip is actually impressive, and it alleviates one of my fears about this new base model because to be called a pro-level machine, you want pro-level performance. And basically, if you look at the old base level M2 MacBook Pro, the one that started at $2,000 just nine months ago, this M3 chip outscores it in single core performance and scores around the same in multi-core performance. So for your money, you're basically getting as good or better CPU performance on the new base level M3 MacBook Pro at a $400 price reduction, which is really good news for customers. Furthermore, as an upgrade from the old M2 MacBook Pro, we are seeing a massive 
40% increase in single core performance on this M3 chip. And that is just a crazy year over year performance bump. Now, if we load up the new Cinebench 2024, a more intensive CPU benchmark, which has like a bunch of new things in it, we can see there is a wider gap between the M3 Pro and the M3 chip with the M3 Pro gaining a 24% performance jump over this M3 chip, but still the M3 is scoring pretty respectable here for its price range. Now, let's check out the graphics performance because this is where the M3 model should suffer the most because of its fewer GPU cores. So for a graphics benchmark, I am using the GFX benchmark and we can see there is a big jump for metal optimized workflows for the M3 Pro chip getting a 61% performance jump compared to the regular M3 chip. Now, unlike the CPU performance increases, the GPU from the M2 to the M3 uh, isn't that big of a jump, right? With the M2 scoring around 48.6 frames per second, while the M3 scores around 52 frames per second, and that's just a 6.7% performance jump. Next, moving along to a gaming benchmark for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This is running at the highest settings at 1920 by 1200. And we can see the M3 Pro also scores higher in FPS, getting 49 frames per second over the M3 chip, which comes in at 32 frames per second, or a 41% performance increase over the base level M3 chip. For GPU performance, we are seeing bigger differences than we were for CPU workloads. Now, while I can't do a test of every real world usage scenario for development or music production or 3D modeling, like there are so many tools that people are using uh, with their MacBook Pro, so many different apps, right? Like I, I feel bad about that, but I always gotta do like the video export test cause I'm a, you know, I, I don't even know. I don't even call myself video editor. I just make YouTube videos and I use Final Cut. So uh, for this, I wanna do the Final Cut Pro benchmark. It's not even a benchmark. It's just a 10 minute uh, 4K video export, uh, exporting to H.264. And we can see that right off the bat, there's not that much of a difference between the M3 and the M3 Pro. And it takes a little bit of a while for the M3 Pro to gain any sort of speed advantage during the export test. By the end of the export, we can see that the M3 Pro beat the regular M3 at five minutes and 43 seconds, but it didn't take long for the M3 to catch up, finishing the export in six minutes and two seconds. Yeah, that's just a 19 second difference between the M3 and the M3 Pro model. So purely from a video export standpoint, that extra power on the M3 Pro doesn't add up to any significant time savings. All right, so what's the conclusion of these tests? Because I think to no one's surprise, the more expensive M3 Pro chip is faster. No one is surprised by those results, right? But I went into making this video with some questions, right? One of those was, can I recommend the base model M3 MacBook Pro from a performance standpoint, or is this a model you should avoid? And what I think is surprising is just how big of an improvement the base level chip is because it's enough to be compared to the old M2 Pro chip from the previous year. In a lot of tests, it was able to hold its own, especially in CPU performance. And within the span of nine months, the M3 chip is good enough to stand in for that previous M2 Pro level chip at the base level configuration at $400 less than that previous 14 inch base level model. I would say the weakest part of the M3 chip is still with GPU performance, and that's really where you'll start to notice a lot more benefits upgrading to that M3 Pro chip. And if you need stronger GPU performance for your own workflow, it's probably the area where you should start to consider upgrading to the M3 Pro or maybe even the M3 Max. And listen, it's not all downsides. While the M3 Pro wins in performance, uh, there's some benefits to going for the M3 chip, and it wins in a very important metric battery life. And according to Apple's own stats, it should be able to reach around 22 hours of maximum battery life, while the M3 Pro is rated at only 18 hours of battery life. Also during these tests, I did not notice anything abnormal with the thermals on either machine. I did not hear the fans on either computer spin up to anything audible. The fans for my lights in the studio were louder than anything these MacBook Pros were putting out. So it doesn't seem like there's a major catch here. Well, I guess there is kind of a catch for two things. Um, first of all, if you need external monitor support with more than one monitor, well, you'll wanna upgrade to the M3 Pro model because the regular M3 Mac can only drive one external display. This M3 Pro model can drive two external displays. If you need more than that, you're gonna have to upgrade to M3 Max, which can drive four external displays. Secondly, the memory on the base model is still pretty low at just eight gigabytes. 
and that can be a pretty big bottleneck. So if you are someone that uses professional applications frequently, I would probably recommend stepping this up to at least 16 gigabytes of memory for the M3 model. And at that point, I wouldn't blame you for stepping up to the M3 Pro chip, right? It comes with a more powerful chip and it also comes with 18 gigabytes of memory by default. So that's a $200 difference between uh, the 16 gigabyte M3 MacBook Pro. So uh, then you kind of, you know, have to wonder, you know, maybe just go for this model. However, if you don't use Pro applications or infrequently use them, well, I think the eight gigabyte model is fine. And honestly, I can't blame people for wanting the base level model over something like a MacBook Air. You're getting more ports, better speakers, a better display, more performance, and better battery life. And that's gonna make a lot of people pick this over something like a MacBook Air, even if they don't necessarily need pro level performance. This is just a really good laptop with a lot of good hardware in it, and everyone can appreciate that. And if you're the type of user that values those features, I really think this base level M3 MacBook Pro is worth it. And I think it's a really good value in Apple's MacBook lineup because another question I had to answer is, is this a better value than the old M2 MacBook Pro? Is it worth that $100 difference between a 512 gigabyte M2 MacBook Pro? And yeah, it is. It is obviously a much better Pro MacBook Pro than the old M2 MacBook Pro that it replaces. That old 13 inch touch bar model, you know, it's a good thing that's gone. This is a better laptop to fill that spot. And even if you were comparing it against the 256 gigabyte base model, not even going for equivalent storage, even at $300 more, I think this is a better laptop. I think it's a better buy. But let me know, what do you think of the M3 MacBook Pro? Is it worth it? And hey, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to give me a like. If you wanna see more from the channel, make sure you subscribe. And if you plan on buying a MacBook Pro, check out my affiliate links in the description below. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.